Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. The Israelites, right? Did he deliver the whole world or was it the Israelites? So when the Most High chose Noah, did he say, Noah, I'm choosing the whole world or did he say, I'm choosing you, Noah? So when he chose Abraham, did he say, I'm choosing the whole world of Abraham? Isaac? Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Today they call African Americans. Haitians, Jamaicans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans. You understand that? So the world got us confused thinking that God loved everybody. That's not in the Bible. This Bible is, it means records. This is all recorded history here. When you read, the, you read the Bible, so when it gives a description of Jesus, what do we say Jesus looked like? Like us. Well, give me a description. Like hair like what? Hair like wool, burnt brass skin, right? So why is it that they give us a portrait of this? But then, then you got to ask yourself, watch this. this. What I'm trying to do is prove to you, because I asked you a question, your nationality, and you said African American. Then I asked you about this, and you understand that's a lie, right? That Jesus is a lie. But let me ask you a question. Watch this. God actually going to tell you something about yourself. Isaiah 1 and 3. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner. So if you know anything about an ox, it's a stubborn animal. It's a strong animal that works in the field, but it's stubborn, hard-headed. But God said it knows its owner. No matter how stubborn it is, it knows who it belongs to. Watch this. And the ass, his master's crib. And the donkey knows its home. You can take a donkey down the road, and it's going to know its home. Watch this. But Israel. But who? But Israel. It's talking about the Israelites that Moses delivered out of Egypt, the 12 tribes of Israel that was chosen from the beginning. Right. It says something specifically about Israel. Watch this. Do us not know. Read. My people, do us not consider. So my elder, let me ask you a question. How, how old are you, if I may ask? You 50. You've been out here for a while. You 50 years old. Out of all these years you've been out here, how come you never considered what, what the hell is an African American? What, 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 the, what, what is that? God says his people does not what? Does not consider. Our people don't even think about it. We don't even consider why they call us black when my shirt is, is black on the My inside shirt is black. Your shirt is black. I'm, our, our skin is brown, so why do they label us black or African American or color or Negro? God says we don't even consider it. That's how you know this Bible is talking about you. But because this Bible is talking about you, Deuteronomy 10 and 12, Understand that when you read the scriptures, the people that Moses brought out of Egypt that built the pyramids is the same people that built this land in chattel slavery. That's right. In slavery. In slavery. The same people that was out there slaving, moving them bricks around, is the same people that built up the White House that, uh, that we don't inhabit. Right. And that's what we out here trying to show our people. I, if you give me a second, I can show you that that's documented in the Bible, what happened. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10. Verse 12. So now that you understand that you're an Israelite, right? Because I just watch what God said. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? Now, pray though, this for you too. Watch what God say. So you understand that you're an Israelite, right? Alfredo, hold on, hear me. We're going to take a picture in a second, but listen to this real quick. Alfredo, listen to this. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Again from the top. So you uh, you understand that you're an Israelite according to the Bible. Don't when people ask you if you which, what's your nationality, you you are you are an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar. That's right. That's what your forefather that you descend from. His name was Issachar. Right. Issachar had children. Those children had children. They had children. They had children that had your father. 
that had Jew. It gonna continue the line, descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the same for you, brother. Judah had children, that had children, that had children, that had children, and here you are right now. We are the Israelites that you read about in the Bible. Read. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord that God require of thee? So Tony, my elder, let me ask you a question. If somebody requires something of you, do you have an option? Meaning, I, I require you to be here at 8 o'clock. If you're not here at 8 o'clock, what's the consequence? You get fired, right? So God says he does what? What does the Lord thy God require of thee? So because you understand and know that you're Alfredo, this is for you, bro. Don't go nowhere because we want to get your picture too, bro. Stay and listen to this, though, because God requires something of you. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. And that's what's not happening here in Chicago. It's no fear for God in the city of Chicago. Right. Our people fear man more than anything here in Chicago. Bring it out. If it was a fear for God in Chicago, 80 people wouldn't have got shot in one week. In a weekend, not even seven days, I'm talking about a couple of days. Listen to the madness that we're talking about. 80, 80 of our people shot in the streets of Chicago. And don't nobody even consider nothing to stop and think and just look. What's wrong with our communities? You got to stop and look at yourself first because y'all out here on the street are the example. Y'all right. the elders. Most of the people that's going up and down these streets is 40, 50 years old. And they not leading these shorties up. That's why you got 14 and 15 years old walking around with guns bigger than them. Right. Killing people by the dozen. I'm not talking about one or two people shot. I'm talking about 80 people shot, including one-year-olds. How out. sick is that? That's some sick stuff. In the city of Chicago, you got babies getting murdered. And this ain't happening once, once upon a time. This damn near every week is happening. Right. Babies being slain in the street, innocent kids. And don't nobody stop to think and ask themselves what's really going on out here. Read. But you fear the Lord, thank God. Because there's no fear for God out here. Because if y'all fear God, a lot of those shootings wouldn't be happening because you'd be keeping the Sabbath holy. Right. A lot of y'all out here Friday night when you should be out fellowshipping with your brothers. Out here on Friday night when it's the Lord's Sabbath getting stretched out in the street. Why? Because it's judgment, thus said the Lord. God said my day is a holy day of rest. If you break it, you die. Thus said the Lord. Read. To walk in all his ways. Newsflash, black man. Jesus Christ looked like you. That's right. Jesus Christ looked like you. I'm talking to you, Tony. He looked like you and you know this. Right. Read. And to love him. Read. To serve. And to serve the Lord thy God. Serving God requires actions. Let me ask you a question, right? You heard of the Ten Commandments? Is this keeping the Sabbath holy in the Ten Commandments? Do you keep the Sabbath holy? Do you believe in God? So if you believe in God and you fear God, what would you do? I'm going to break it down real You got children? Okay, so let me ask you a question. If you, if you got sons or daughters? Both. So if you ask your children to do something and they blatantly disregard your word of what you ask them to do, what happens? A punishment. This is the punishment when we sin against our father. That's right. God told us to keep the Sabbath holy. He told men, grow your beard. Don't put a razor to your face. Don't put a razor to your head. We said we wanted to sin against that. Slavery is what we got as a punishment. Bring it out. Slavery is what we got as a punishment. Read. And to serve the Lord thy God Read. with all thy heart. Read. And with all thy soul, Read. to keep his commandments. And that's the main thing that we are here to do is to show our people. If you want the killing to stop in the city of Chicago, thou shalt not kill. Simple. It it's literally that simple. We out here marching up and down the street talking about Black Lives Matter and how we love God. God says that shall not kill. Murder rate obsolete. Three-year-olds get a chance to grow up. One-year-old babies get a chance to live. Why? Off that one simple commandment. Thou should not kill. Babies growing up. Our people repopulating the earth. Israel standing back on their feet as leaders in this earth. That's right. Read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day. And that's the whole problem of why we in this captivity is because we sin against our father. You got to understand the love that God has for you, giving you this chance to know who you are. Because this knowledge and understanding, you know how many people go to years of college and don't even know who are the chosen people of the book. Revelation 2 verse 9, let me show you something. Because if you ask, if you ask anybody in the world, they're going to tell you that those people over in Israel are God's chosen people. They're going to tell you that. When they can, and they hold up pictures. If you look up and do your research, they pray to black images. They know that Jesus is black and who you are. That's why they call themselves Jewish. They know they're not the real Jews. 
You are the real Jews that's in slavery that you doc that's documented in the Bible. That's Read. Right. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. Bring it on! I know thy works Read. and tribulation. Let me ask you a question. No matter what community you go to out here in America, if you go to the slums, who you see in tribulation? Who you see in the slums and ghettos? California, Texas, New York. Who in the slums and ghettos? God knows our what? Our tribulation! He knows your tribulation though. What's so sad? This happens every five minutes. No matter where we go to teach at, every five minutes it's a fire, it's a, 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 an ambulance going up and down the street. Every five minutes this is happening. You can't tell me that that's not sick. Something is wrong with our people. Something is wrong with our people and we haven't yeah. even stopped to think about it. But you got a big responsibility because you an example. Right. You an elder out here. I should be seeking wisdom from you. Elder Tony, how can I overcome this problem I have in my household? I'm having troubles with my wife. You supposed to be sitting me down. Brother, according to the Bible, that's how you deal with it. it but out. we don't have that. That's why you got young men around here running the straight, gunning each other down. Because we don't have that no more. Read. In poverty, but thou art rich. Uh -huh. And God says you are rich. I know our people are hurting and struggling right now. Because it's a punishment. It hurt when you got to punish your kids, don't it? You don't want, you just wish that they would listen to you. But when you punish them, you're doing it for, for what? They own what? They own good. All of this is for your own good. That's it's right. for you to learn to love God and serve him. God says he made the whole world for you. You didn't want it, so you're going into slavery now. Bring it up. That's documented in the Bible. The That's whole right. world was created for the so-called black and Hispanic man. That's, That's right. right. And I can stand on it and say it because it's documented in the Bible. Bring it the up. whole Bring world up. was created for the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord, though. I ain't talking about a block that we dying over. We over here dying over 63rd, 64th, 79th, Lamb Run. Bring it up. King Drive. We out here dying for Madison Street. God said he made the whole world for you and gave it to you. That's but right. you didn't want it. You'd rather take slavery. I'm talking about the Hispanic man, the Cuban man, the Dominican man. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. You know what blasphemy means? It means lie. God says he knows what? The blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Because they say they Jews. We not around here, our people not around here said, we over here saying we the real Jews. Thus said the Lord, we the real Jews. And we can stand on it and bring it out the Bible and prove it. We the real Jews that you read about in the Bible. That's right. We are the Jews that you read about in the Bible. Right. We are the Jews that you read about in the Bible. Right. But when I ask you, you said African American. But why? Give me Deuteronomy 28. It's a reason why this happening. It's a, give me 15 presents. Because it's documented in the Bible. What you gotta realize is this is real life history. But what, what's separated from this is because the world makes us believe that this is a fairy tale. How? Bring it up. Give us this lie right here. When you read the Bible and it says hair like wool, and then you look at this, okay, something ain't adding up. I don't want no parts of it. And that's why our people separate themselves from the Bible. But they don't understand this. When Moses brought us out of Egypt, we was those people, be, ain't no white man surviving in Egypt, bro. Bring the it son, up, The yeah. son to eat them up alone. That's the right. The son alone will eat them up. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. That's what Moses told us when we came out of Egypt. Read. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So you, I remember, you remember I asked you a question. I said, if your kids don't listen to you, What's going to happen? You said a punishment, right? If our people don't what? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Your father told you the same thing. He said, if you don't listen to the words I'm giving you, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. No, talk about the commandments. To do all his commandments. That should not kill with in the murder rate in Chicago. But why is the murder rate sky high in Chicago? Because we don't what? To do all his commandments. We don't do the commandments of God here in Chicago. That's right. We're not keeping the commandments of God out here in Chicago. That's right. We got our elder men out here on the street nodding off every time we turn around. Right. Where are the elder men to look up to? Our elders out here stressed up and down the street, drunk, high, falling asleep, standing up. Who are the young men supposed to look to? Our young men got nobody to look to, but the Israelites is back on the block. We're the example right. for our people to follow. Right. Read. 
and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So stay with me, Tony. God says, I'm going to give you laws and ordinances. I'm giving you something to do after I bring you out of Egypt. I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give you the riches in the world. But I require something to you. Let me ask you a question, Tony. If you go, if, if you hire somebody to work for you, right? Do you expect them to work for free? God says, I'm going to give you everything that you ask for. But I, respect some, I expect something to you too. Read. That all these curses shall come upon thee. And if we didn't, and, and because we didn't listen to God, God said all these what? All these curses shall come upon thee. You want to know what a curse is? Do a 360. That's a curse. Bring it up. This is a curse that our people live in there. Right. Our people are literally stacked up on top of each other. It's rare that you can find somebody living with their own backyard here in the city of Chicago. Right. The whole world was made for you and majority of our people don't even got backyards. Right. What's really going on in the world? The, the simple things. But be, why did that happen though, Tony? It's the reason why. It's because what? We sinned against God. Bring it out. We sinned against the Most High God. Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse uh, 68. 37, 37, 37. Verse 37. And thou shall become an astonishment. This is for you too, sister. What's your name? I'm saved. I'm saved. You I'm saved? With you. I'm with you. No, what's your name? Lord Sia. Lord Sia? Okay, my elder sister, my elder brother. This Bible is written about us. The reason why we think we African American in color is because God says what? And thou should become an astonishment. When you look at the black man, you know why the Bible calls us an astonishment? Because we were created to rule the world. You gotta ask yourself, how did some big black Negroes let these puny red people put us in slavery? How we let that happen? Because let me ask you a question. And then, not only did we let it happen, we allow it to still happen to this day. Right. Because why? If somebody was to come in your house, right, kick down your door, kidnap your kids, would you fight for them until you die? So what happened to our elders? Why are elders not fighting for us? Why are elders not raising us up to show us who we are? How did, why did our elders just let us go into captivity and they're not fighting for us right now? Bring our elders would rather get high and drunk than to save our youth. Bring it out. Right. That's the example of what happened in the Bible. God, that's an astonishment. That's an astonishment when you can see an elder black man sit there and watch a younger black man do all types of violence and not want to stop him or rebuke him. It it's an astonishment when you can see a young man sell drugs to a man that could be his father. That's an astonishment. You don't see this stuff happening in other communities. Wherever you go in our community, you see our own people destroying our own people. That's right. right. Our people want to march up and down the street when the white man gun is down every once in a while. Right. Our people kill each other by the hour. Right. Bump that. In America, by the minute. That's right. Every Bring minute it's a black life being took by another black life. Right. Bring it out. Here in this country alone. Read. A proverb and a byword. You know what that byword is? Calling yourself African American. God says, because you sin against me, you're going to go into slavery. And you know what's going to 68. And you know what's going to happen while you're going to slavery. You're going to become an astonishment to these nations. Because they know who you are. But they just so astonished. How the hell can we keep them in slavery for 400 years and they don't even open a book and read to Bro. find out who they are? Bring but not out. only that, we got our people that say they believe in God, right? They read the Bible but still have no understanding of it. Right. How could you read the Bible when the Bible is full of judgment on the other nations but still sit there and say that God loves everybody? When you read the Bible, God says Israel going into slavery. But when y'all get yourself together, I'm destroying these nations for you. That's right. The white man going down. The Arab man going down. The Irish man going down. The Polish man going down. For your redemption. That's in the Bible. But if you ask the elder, they're going to tell you, guess what? God love everybody. And we saved by the blood of Jesus. That's not in the scriptures. Christ said he came to die for you. But guess what? He requires you to keep his commandments. But you know what he says about him dying for you? If I come on this earth and I die for you and you still transgress against my laws, you're getting it worse. Christ didn't come and die in this earth so that you can continue in sin. That's not in the Bible. Give me, give me Titus. Give me grace. Because a lot of our people think that, that we can continue to go against the law. The Bible says specifically, thou shalt not eat pork, it is unclean. Bring How do you justify continuing to eat pork? How do you justify it? It clearly states in the Bible, and Christ himself says, I didn't come to destroy the law. I never came to destroy the law. So how do you sit here and justify eating pork when the Bible says don't do it? Read. Bring it out. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2. Verse 11. So why I'm reading this to you is to show you that you understand, bro. It's more than just knowing you an Israelite. You got action. 
You got to step up as an elder and be an example. That's Put right. your beard on your face. You bought your head. Stop boring your head. Teach. If it's receiving, let it receive, but keep it low. Bring it out. That's thus saith the Lord. You read the Bible, right? It says, thou should not shave thy beard in the Bible, right? Have you read that before? So why do our people blatantly go against that? Because we don't understand, we don't understand that it's still required of us to keep God's commandments. Read. For the grace of You got a question, sister? No. Okay, read. Watch this. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So the Bible says that the grace of God appeared to all men. That men that is talking about is the Israelites according to the Bible. Read. That's right. Teaching us. So the grace of God, meaning Christ dying on the cross, is supposed to teach you something. It's not supposed to give you a it's not to give you a pass and continue in sin. It's supposed to teach you something. You know what it was that Christ was coming to teach us? That you can keep the commandments. Right. That's why the Bible says he was put in the earth in the world and the, the, the word was made flesh. Christ came into the earth to show you that you can keep the laws. Not to break the laws. Not to break the laws. That's like me asking you a question, right? You sit here and you break your back to send your kids to the best schools here in America. But instead, they turn around and take that money and push it down the drain and get high. You're going to feel some type of way, right? Imagine how Christ come, feel coming on this earth, getting put on that cross to die for you, so that you, and, and to be an example so that you can know what righteousness looks like, and you still say, I don't want to be righteous. That's like taking your trust fund and shoving it down the toilet. You, you telling me that's not disrespectful? So imagine how the creator of the world feel. Our people don't understand this Bible. Let me ask you a question, right? Do you think that, imagine, look at our people, right? Look at our people out here. This ain't even a judgment that you read about in the Bible that's coming. Break it out. Our people don't understand the Bible says God is a man of war. That's right. Out. God is coming to bring forth judgment to the earth. That's, that's right. the reason why we out here on the street. That's this right. is to get our people to wake up and understand that you gotta snap out of it. You gotta snap out of it now before it's too late. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. So the Bible, so Christ dying on the cross was to teach you to do what? Denying ungodliness. No, to say that you're saved by the blood. Denying ungodliness. You know what's ungodliness? Bro, I got two for ten. Come shop with me. Square, square, square. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. God says to do what? Denying ungodliness. No, I'm good. That's ungodliness selling drugs to your own people. Bring it's it ungodly out. selling drugs, period. Bring it out. Get a job. Right. I used to sell drugs. Brothers up here used to sell drugs. I'm telling you, it's a lot better to get a job and not have to look over your shoulder. Right. It's a lot better to have a faithful check coming every week and not have to worry about nobody up in the 40 on you. Right. Or somebody slapping your drugs out your pocket and running off. It's a lot easier. Read. And worldly lust. And to give up worldly lust. You know what's the lust of the world? Drugs. Drugs. Drugs is the lust of the world. Read. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 2. Bring it on. That the age men. The who? Age men. I'm only 30. You 50. So you're almost two times my age. So the Bible says that who? The age men. It's specifically talking to the elder men. Read. Be Sober! No, high. Be sober! Drunk. Sober! God says it's a requirement for you to be sober. That's, That's right. right. You know why it's a requirement for you to be sober? Look at the world you're living in. You can't get caught sleeping out here. One, one, one minute you're nodding off on the corner and the next minute you got a bullet through your head. Right. Uh, we literally been out here teaching on these street corners and we saw our brothers falling off like this. Our elders. And it hurt us to the court to see our elders like this. Our elders like this, but you know what's even sicker? It's our own people selling it to them. Bring it out. It's our own people selling it to them. So all we are here to do is to show you, according to the Bible, you are Israelites. First case after eight. You gotta come back to your nationality. You gotta remember who you are. Wake up, just think about it. What is an African and American? Africa was named after a man. America was just named after somebody four, three, four hundred years ago. Who were we before that? We were a people before we were labeled of African and American. Who were we? Read. This is the book of First Kings, chapter 8, verse 46. Yeah. If they sin against thee. So let me ask you a question. When you look at the so-called black man, do we look like we're full of sin? 
We look like we're full of sin. God says if they yeah, what? Brother. If they sin against thee. So we sin against God. We can say that. We acknowledge it. We sin most high. Read. Right. For there is no man that sinneth not. Because we're not perfect yet. We striving. But what I can say is I'm perfect at not smoking cigarettes. Right. I'm perfect at not smoking weed. Bring it out. I'm perfect at not eating pork. You can be perfect. You can fight sin. That's right. We in the flesh and men just like you. I used to smoke weed every day, spend so much money on weed, it didn't even make no sense. I used to sell it and smoke it at the same time. Bring it All back, backwards. But I, could, I became sober, why? Because this Bible put life in me. That's right. This Bible put life in me. When I woke, when I read this Bible and it said that you chose it, the whole world was made for you. Now go up there and help your people. As a man, I said I'm going out there for my people. On these street corners where they spit on us, cuss us out, tell us how much we ain't ish. We stand out here faithfully every day, every weekend to show our people, you are God's chosen people, black man. That's right. Read. And thou be angry with them. So you know how you tell your children something they don't listen, you get angry, right? Our father, all the way up there in the heavens, he told us to do something that we didn't listen, we sinned. He got angry with us, read. And deliver them to the enemy. And deliver them to who? The enemy. That shows you that everybody is not of God. Because God says his people got what? Enemies. I'm going to ask you a question. Who is the black man's main enemy? Outside, outside of our own people. Who is our, our enemy? I'm going to see if you know. You are elder. You've been out here for so So you say you're 50, right? So you've seen the, 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 the coming up of the Civil Rights Act. You've seen the oppression of the water holes and the dog chasing. Especially, you seen Fred Hampton out here. You was, out, you was alive when Fred Hampton was out here, right? You was a shorty, but you was out here. So you seen our people when they was actually trying to stand up on their feet, right? Read. So that they carried them away, kept them. And thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy. So who was the enemy that they was fighting against? I'm going to just make it plain. The so-called white man is your enemy. That's God right, says, yeah. I'm going to send you to your, but it ain't just him. Because when you do your research on the sub-Saharan slave trade, the Africans and the Arabs. Negroes to the so-called Negroes here, we not Africans. Africans, are, they know we not the same people. The Africans and the Arabs sold us to the white man. That's documented in the scriptures. Bring it out. But God says, if you sin against them, what's gonna happen? Read. So that they carry them away captive. And was we carried away captive on slave ships? Yeah, read. Unto the land of the enemy. The land of the enemy. Who land is this? Is they who is they? The white man. We Bring got carried here to the white man land, read. Far or near. And then it wasn't just here in America. Britain, England, we China, we scattered all throughout the world, read. Verse 47. Yet if they shall bethink themselves. Let me ask you a question, my elder Tony. What does it mean to bethink yourself? You gotta remember. You gotta go back and think, like, man, who, if we're not African and American, who are we? If the Bible says that Christ was black with woolly hair, I'm black with woolly hair. My children are black with woolly hair. So up. who are we? We the Israelites that you read about in the Bible. That's right. Ain't no way you can be black, African American, color, Negro, all at the same time. God made it simple. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's right. You're an Israelite. Read. In the land, whether they were carried captive, and repent and make supplication. So the whole reason that God sent us into slavery is to repent. Repent. Stand up on your feet, black man and black woman. Stand up on your feet and repent. You know what it means to repent? Come back to the laws of God. That's right. Keeping the Sabbath holy. Right. Wearing your fringes. You know one of the main things you can do to repent? Stop putting that razor on your face and your head. Right. That's something simple that you can show the most high through your actions how you love him. That's what we out here to do. We out here to remind our people who you are, according to the Bible. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. 
from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.